think it's the, the shame about Hollywood is, you know, someone told me a, an analogy, which I think sounds not great. Uh, sort of executives that are driving in their car at 100 miles an hour, but they never look through the windscreen. They're always looking at the rearview mirror as they're driving along and, and not understanding why they have accidents. And they're, they're never, they're, they're not leaders. They're just they're following trends instead of creating trends. And that's why I think it's become so tired. Um, and, you know, I'd li if I could, I'd like to ban remakes and, you know, make people come up with original thoughts. It's, you know, it's really important to, you know, we're going to be the, you know, the decade of remakes, which is sort of like what we've run out of. You know, imagine next year every song was a cover. Every band stopped writing original music and they just did covers of songs from the 70s and 80s. You'd, you know, it'd get boring. But the movie was an international sensation. It had a very small... And it was a tiny budget. I know about the movie. Yeah. yeah. And nobody... And, and the thing about that film was it came out of nowhere, too. Nobody... Well, 28 you know. places said no thanks. It was turned down by 28 different places. The Festivals? The script, the, the, the script the that script. went on to win the Academy Award. So nothing's Award. changed. Exactly. Oh, yeah, no. Exactly. Right, right, right. So, but it had a very small release in the States. It only made about 22, 23 million. But in, so in Europe, it made like 100 million. Just in Europe alone. So it was this... International sensation. And it Much put a lot of actors so on the map it. too. Yeah. yeah, Benicio del Toro, Kevin Spacey Arkin won his Spacey. first Oscar. Yeah. And did they all sound like Alan Arkin? Why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Is it me? Well, I got real lucky that Avalon was the first real movie I did in the terms of dramatic. Uh, you know. Did you get acting. cast from your from your stand up or did you audition? Barry Levinson had seen me at, at the improv and had called me into audition for a few of his films. He's a good director. Yeah, he's yeah. awfully good, yeah. And he likes to put a comedian in, in a lot of his movies. Uh, Dennis Miller, Dis the Clo Disclosure. Diner. Uh, all. Dennis Leary and Wag the, Di uh, Wag the Dog, of course, Diner and Paul Reiser and Tin Men. Uh, it's, it's a strange thing, uh, a phenomenon. In a lot of his movies, he likes to literally have a comedian. So. It was insanely fortunate that I didn't have any formal training as an actor. I had 16 years of stand-up to become comfortable in front of the audience. Right, right, right. So all I could really do at that point was be comfortable in front of the camera. And that transcended for Barry. He just thought, this person appears to be real because they're so comfortable. When I got the job, I still was, this is a dramatic movie. Oh, no, I better learn how to do this before we start shooting. And I remember I went to Barry and said, you know, there's, <laughs> my manager also represents Paul Reiser. And when Paul got aliens, he worked with this acting coach. So I kind of would like to get him a copy of the script, maybe work with him before we start shooting. And Barry said, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm not going to let some guy come in here and fuck up what you already got going here. No, you're the guy. Just be loose and natural in front of the camera. You're the guy, OK? And so I was ridiculously fortunate that the first real <laughs> dramatic work was for a director who hated to see acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of any different girls screen testing for my part and we all got like several days to come up with our look and everybody um, created a different you know thing and most of the girls were sort of space age with mm -hmm. little lightning bolts mm -hmm. and really cute and mannequin like or you know beautiful and, so you, and I made myself into oh, Nosferatu you, you know oh, that's cool, like the babe. freak you know with the that's really punk hair that makes and it the thing. And, and, and when I saw everybody at the lunch I I was convinced that I would I had made myself into a, a hideous cartoon oh. I wouldn't get the part <laughs> and I started you know. crying oh. I was like oh no I've totally fucked it up you know and I did mm -hmm. gymnastics in my audition and rolled my eyes back yeah. and all this stupid stuff it Ended up use. in the movie, yeah. I mean, that, yeah. What was it like when you work with somebody else, like Brando, who was very comfortable improvising too? Is that is that a dream come true? Or is well, no, I had a, I had a bad time with him. Everybody talks about the taxi scene on Waterfront, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, we go to shoot this thing. I'm off camera, and we're on Marlin. Well, I should have known something was up because we start to shoot the two shot, and he says to me, "How's mom?" That's not in the script, right? But I figured, well, I've been trained kind of the way he was. Let's see where we go. I said, I don't know. She was pretty good the last time I talked to her. Well, I was worrying about her. I said, well, you know, yeah, well, I said, wait a minute. And improvisation sometimes is saying what you really want to say to the other actor, but you keep it within the confines of the scene if you have the imagination to do it. I said, I'll tell you what you can do. You put 10 cents in the phone, you dial seven numbers, the phone rings, and you say, hello, mom, how are you? We cut. 
Finally, we get through it, and I'm off camera, and he's close up. <clears throat> and an actor, if he's any kind of a professional off camera, overacts or does anything he can do to help the other actor get the result without interfering with his performance. I'm ready now to do my close up, and I said, Where's Marlon? Yeah, says, I, Kazan said, I let him go home. He said he was tired. Not the problem. Well, I was, you know, this was a big thing for me to play Marlon Brando's brother. I mean, I had done Marty on television, but this was a, a film. And I did it with the uh, script girl. That's a girl, a continuity girl, and make sure she's saying everything, whatever is right, with her doing his lines. So all your close ups in that scene? Yeah, well, I must have burned his ass. We came out even, you know. I think he's uh, one of the most charismatic people that ever hit the screen in the last 50, 70 years. If he wasn't, he couldn't pause and take as long as he did. Mm -hmm. But I love to act with him again because I haven't forgotten that. That's show business, I guess. Young actors, that they, they want to be De Niro, they want to be James Dean and all these mm -hmm. things, so they bring all this stuff to the set. You know, you get that they have like they're living a harsh life or whatever, but De Niro comes on the set, I don't know anything about his business. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he's preparing for his work, you know, because he does that on his own time. He comes, he shows up, and he's so focused. And Our big scene together was just so profound. It was... You mean the one in the, in the theater? Yeah. Yeah, that one was that one threw me a bit. I gotta say, I didn't see that coming when I saw the movie. Oh, yeah, she didn't see nice. it coming at all. <laughs> <laughs> that, that got me. Is the, that is sexual tension. Well, see, that's what I'm talking about. That's what's that's funny. What made it a great scene. From my toes <laughs> up to my. Yeah, but that's why that's that's why you got nominated that's why you can't for all those awards. And, yeah. All the reviews, they were like. We, I love how you capture the burgeoning sexuality of that age. And I always thought, she here's a guy, she's just, he's listening to her. Mm -hmm. They don't get it. Her parents don't listen to her, and he's asking her questions about herself. Right, and right, right. So it's really more innocent, because she's like, oh, he's listening to me. And then when he comes close to her, then it's a whole other yeah. thing. It's about pleasing, too. It's about young girl. It's about, you know, she wanted... To, wanting to do something that's like do you like that you know that kind of right 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 thing which girls get into it's pleasing sometimes and, and, you know. and i was so very much 19 at the time that i got nominated because i did these interviews and here's my answers john this is where i go gosh what a moron i was so 19 but they go like wow you're 19 years old how do you feel being nominated and blah 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 and I was all very cynical and unimpressed, and it, but I was 19, I had an yeah. attitude, you know, and I was like, people are still getting murdered in the world. Because <laughs> I was with Brad Pitt that, that year, and he came with me, and he was in the car right before we go to the Oscars, and he had two pairs of shoes and then two ties, and he's like, you know, and it's our first time, so I think he was very nervous, and he was like, okay, should I wear this tie with these shoes? You know, and then I was like, okay, well, let me see the other ones. Maybe this tie with these shoes. And I, I go, I don't know. But he kept, I think he was very nervous, you know. And, and then like, I said, cornrows. Yeah. yeah, I said, Brad, I'm wearing cornrows. It doesn't really fucking matter. The evening of the Academy Awards in New York, when Annie Hall received its, its various awards, um, I was not there, as you know. And, and uh, the first that I heard about it was the following morning, uh, you know, I, I played jazz that night with my orchestra, and then I went home, and I went to sleep at, in New York time, um, 12.30. Reading young. Pardon me? Reading young. Reading? Young. Yeah. Oh, that's right, the conversation, that's exactly right. And, and, uh, and I went to sleep, and um, this, this was only 9.30 in California, and, uh, and the next morning I woke, I took my phone off the hook when I went to sleep because I didn't want anyone to call me. And the next morning um, when I woke up and, and picked up the newspaper to have breakfast, I saw on the front page of the Times that um, Annie Hall had been very successful there. So that was the first that I heard about. Is it a fair question to ask you what you would most like to do? Ever? Ever. I would like to do something which would leave at least 
the art form concerned or the profession better for my having done it.